Good evening. David Berkowitz, 24 years old, a postal worker, walked out of his Yonkers apartment last night, turned the ignition key in his car, and found himself surrounded by police. Well, he said, you got me. Police say those words ended the biggest manhunt in New York City history with the capture of Son of Sam. How's everybody doing today? Here I am in Yonkers, New York, and I'm doing a video about David Berkowitz, the 44 caliber killer, better known as the Son of Sam. He terrorized New York for about a year and killed six people, wounded seven others, and he was finally caught right here on this street. And it's right in front of his building, which is still standing, which is right here in front of me. He was on the sixth floor and he blacked out all the windows and it's a beautiful, beautiful view of the Hudson River here. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell the story. Of, have, have you seen the movie Summer of Sam? Spike Lee, John Leguizamo and uh, Mira Sorvino. Incredible film, incredible movie. Uh, it tells the story, it's fictionalized of course, but uh, it's a great film. And that's what got me interested in the case a long time ago. And yeah, it's very surreal to be here. I want to find close to the exact location where his car is found. I've looked at photograph after photograph. It's very difficult to match up. Some fences have changed and stuff, but I'll figure it out or I'll get close. I, don't, I shouldn't say I'm going to figure it out because I've already kind of done the Google Street View up and down and not been able to particularly match it up right, but we'll find it. But we're going to show you his apartment right now. All right, let's go. So as we're walking, I'll tell you a bit about David Berkowitz. He was a postal employee, and he generally targeted attractive young women with brown hair, which caused hundreds of young women across New York to have their hair cut short and dyed blonde during the time he terrorized them. And thousands of people just stayed home. David Berkowitz was brought up by his adoptive parents in the Bronx. And in 1971, he joined the army and served for three years where he distinguished himself as a talented shooter. I'm going to have to back up a little bit because there seems to be some work being done. It's going to be very loud. Um, in 1974, he returned to New York and worked as a security guard. But his mental condition began to severely like, go downhill in 1975 and he was later described as or diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic so he felt isolated from the world around him and he began to set I didn't know this but he was an arsonist and set hundreds of fires in New York City 
and he never was arrested for any of them. He was never caught. He began to hear voices of demons that tormented him and told him to commit murder. And on Christmas Eve, 1975, he gave in to those voices and he severely wounded a young girl with a hunting knife. Then he moved into a two-family home in Yonkers and he became convinced that the German shepherd that lived next door was possessed by demons who was ordering him to murder attractive young women. One of the neighborhood dogs was shot and it's presumed that it was by Berkowitz. And he also began to see all of his neighbors as demons as well. So in April, he moved into an apartment and that's the apartment right there, here in Yonkers. But this new home also had dogs. He had a neighbor who was a retired man named Sam, Sam Carr. And he had a black lab named Harvey. And Berkowitz believed Harvey was pleading with him to kill. He also saw Sam as a powerful demon and was referring to him when he later called himself Son of Sam. And then the killing started rapidly. July 28, 1976 is when he quit his job as a security guard. Then the next day he walked up to a parked car in the Bronx where two young women were talking and fired five bullets from his 44 into the car. One girl was killed instantly and the other one was wounded. On October 24th he struck again wounding a 20 year old as he sat in a car talking with a female friend. Then a month later in November Two girls were shot and seriously wounded, 16 years old and I think 18, 17, 18 years old as they walked home from a movie. Then January 30th, 1977, Berkowitz fatally shot a young girl. She sat in a car in Queens with her fiance. Police suspected at this point that they were perpetrated by like one dude, one guy, but there, so many bullets weren't intact, they couldn't really put it together. Then in March of 1977, a 19-year-old college student named Virginia was shot to death as she walked home in Manhattan. But a bullet was found intact at the scene, and it matched a bullet found at the scene of David Berkowitz's first murder. Then the New York police announced that a serial killer was on the loose. It was, all it was known was a white male in his 20s with black hair and of average height and build. He left letters at the crime scene, wrote letters to newspapers. Very bizarre, bizarre letters. A large group of detectives were uh, organized. They were called the Omega Task Force. And then two people were killed on April 17th, an 18-year-old and a 20-year-old near the Hutchinson River Parkway. And that's where he left the note referring to himself as the son of Sam. About t 10 to 12 days later, that's when he shot the Labrador Retriever, who recovered. And the Yonkers police began an investigation, though, because of that shooting of the dog. But Berkowitz began sending bizarre letters to other neighbors and his former landlords. And these individuals, they suspected that David Berkowitz was the son of Sam and reported their suspicions to local police. The Omega Task Force was notified, but they got so many clues that were like tips, thousands, that they couldn't sift through them all. Then on June 26th, the son of Sam, David Berkowitz, he struck again, uh, wounding two young, a young couple as they sat in a car near a disco in Queens. People were losing uh, their minds here in New York City, rightfully so. New York nightclubs, restaurants saw a dramatic drop in business, and then a heat wave and a 25 hour blackout in mid July began. And that set off what's called the Summer of Sam. On July 31st, just two days after the anniversary of his first killing, David Berkowitz shot a young couple kissing in a parked car in Brooklyn. One second, I'm gonna get a little loud here. A young girl was murdered, her boyfriend survived, but he lost his left eye and nearly lost all the vision in his right eye. But a few days later, a major break in the case came when an eyewitness came forward to report that she had seen a man with what looked like a gun minutes before the shots were fired in Brooklyn. Her information led to the first police sketch of David Berkowitz, and she reminded investigators that two police officers had been writing parking tickets on her street that night. A search of tickets issued eventually turned up Berkowitz's car. And at the same time, the Yonkers police were investigating Berkowitz after he escalated a harassment campaign against one of his neighbors. Convinced he was the son of Sam, they informed the Omega Task Force of, their, of their, what they found. The Omega detectives finally put two and two together. On August 10th, David Berkowitz was arrested after leaving his Yonkers home right here. Try to find that front entrance. 
And when he was taken into custody right here on this street, he readily admitted, happily, he's always smiling to being the son of Sam. He was carrying a semi-automatic rifle and he explained that he was on his way to commit another murder. They caught him just in time. That's unbelievable. And they also found the 44 revolver. And of course, there was some question about whether David Bergowitz was mentally fit to stand trial. But on May 8th, 1978, he withdrew an insane defense and pleaded guilty to the six murders. He, he, he loved the media attention, that's for sure. He really, like I said, he's always smiling in all the photographs. It's really creepy. He proceeded to sell his exclusive story rights, but then that prompted New York State to adopt the first in a nationwide series of the Son of Sam laws that take proceeds of criminal earns and gives them to the victims, to a victim's compensation fund. David Berkowitz was given t six 25 years to life sentences for the crime, the maximum penalty allowed at the time. He has been denied parole, obviously. So David Berkowitz is currently being held at the Shaw and Gunk uh, prison correctional facility which is in upstate New York where apparently he's converted to Christianity which seems to be a running theme with people who are given life sentences I think in all seriousness and soberness when I, I shudder to think what my life would have been if I never came to Christ I honestly believe that I would not be alive today I probably would have taken my life because in my times of depression and darkness there was really no reason to get up in the morning no reason to go through the day it was a lot of pain a lot of mental and emotional anguish and guilt and torment and all these things that i was carrying and when i came to the lord you know the lord began to change all those things it seems to me that it's kind of something that a lot of prisoners do and i think they use that as a way to get sympathy or to say that they've changed but this is it this is his building right here now where his car was parked is hard to tell because it was on a curve so there's no curve up there I was already there the curve is down here there's a couple of different photographs of where the car was let's go across the street and show you some more f footage of the uh, building just right here So yes, he was on the sixth floor, which is the top floor that you see there, but he was on the opposite side, his apartment. And somebody currently occupies his apartment. Now where his car was parked, we're gonna have to find, because he was walking to his car and that's where he was arrested. And I'm pretty sure there was a fence, it looked to me in a one photograph, there was a fence on either side. But if you look here, all the way down this street, it's only uh, an aluminum fence, steel fence of some sort, but a stone fence on this side, which looks like it's been here quite a long time. So there could have been maybe one in front of it. There's a high, uh, there's a lot of weed smell here. I'll tell you that. Just looking at the, it's definitely this fence has probably been here since the 70s. It's old. So I was showing close ups of it earlier very old but from what I can tell the curve of the road is down here So I'm taking a look here. 
This is a big steel fence here. But it was right in front of his building. So by my estimation, it was around right here where he was parked on his way to commit another murder. And the police finally caught up with him. He terrorized New York. New York, I mean, especially if you watch Summer of Sam, you kind of get a better idea. I mean, and I know there's lots of documentaries, books, probably other movies made. I just use Summer of Sam as uh, my jumping off point for this video is why I want to do it because it's a movie that I love and uh, this is a fascinating case. Uh, having said that, when you're dealing with true crime, I do want to say to all the victims and their families, rest in peace. And I mean that sincerely because it's a horrific, horrific thing for their families to have to go through and for what they went through and for the people that are wounded. And there's that view I was telling you about. You see the boats out there. So it's around right about here. I'm, I'm thinking, the only thing I read was it was on, uh, on the street in front, down a bit, and this is where it would be. Right in front of his apartment, down a bit. This is the closest I could get in terms of um, a description. Because the address they give for where his car was found is the address of the apartment building. But it was, I wanted to find the exact place on this street, which is difficult, of course. But there's also another curve right there. You can see where that blue car is beside that fence. So it's possible it was right there. Regardless, there's David Berkowitz's apartment. And I hope where he is now, he's in a much smaller, smaller apartment and it gets smaller every day for him he's never getting out so after all that searching i found this picture and that's his 1970 ford galaxy right there and that house in the background is directly to the north right beside the building and it still stands today there it is i was at the wrong end of the street the whole time looking for this elusive fence when the house is right there beside me I was right there in front of it, and I missed it. But I continued doing further research after I filmed the video and thankfully found that, and that's where he was caught. I'd also like to add that from prison, David Berkowitz continues to assert his claims of demonic possession. He stated in a series of nine videos in 2015 that the voice he heard was that of Sam Hain, a druid devil and the true origin of Son of Sam. He added that it was never a dog, saying that detail was fabricated by the media. Okay, so that was my video about David Berkowitz, the son of Sam. There's the apartment right behind me. Now, yeah. yeah, okay. Rest in peace to all of his victims. And David Berkowitz can hopefully not rest in peace one day. Peace to all of you. Peace out.